Okay, he hello everyone. I'm Eunyu No, a type designer and a researcher. Today, what I'm going to tell you is Hangul, which is the native script from Korea. There are two categories following the shape of the stroke, buri and minburi, which are similar to serif and sans serif of the stroke um, in Latin. Um, technically speaking, buri is not exactly the same as serif, but to make it easier to understand, uh, I will say hangul serif and hangul sans serif for the category names. We have godik or dodum for hangul sans serif, um, hangul serif and we have, uh, we have myeongjo or batang for hangul serifs, and we have godik or dodum for hangul sans serifs. Hangul serif can be divided um, into four. Firstly, serif type A has brush touch fillings. Um, the more the brush trace is left, the more classic or dated impressions it conveys. Secondly, serif type B still carries brush touch fillings, but it is more simplified. Next, serif type C, it has angular strokes. And serif type D, it has more modern. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, serif type D. Mm. It has a strong contrast, con contrast, just like Chinese serifs, like Song Ti or um, Min Jo do. Okay, Hangul sans serifs can be split into three. Firstly, said, um, sans serif A. The stroke has little bumps on the top right, and the endings of all strokes look thicker than middle parts. Um, sans serif type B, it has all straight stems. Compared to sans serif type A, it looked um, modern. Okay, and yeah, rounded strokes. Um, while we usually use type um, A or B for text, the others are usually used for titles or displays. Um, where do, then um, where do these letter forms come from? I mean A and B. So who designed them? Um, before anything else, um, I'm going to go to the moment when Hangul was created. Hangul was created by King Sejong in 1443 and introduced to the public in the Hangul manual book called Hunmin Jeongun in 1446. In comparison to scripts in other languages, um, Hangul is much younger alphabet in the world. By the way, Korean people celebrate a birthday of Hangul on the 9th of October, a day when Hunmin Jeongun published. So next month, um, there will be the 572nd birthday of Hangul. Okay, going back to the design, um, the first letter form of Hangul showed up in Hunmin Jeongun. As you can see in the picture, Chinese on the left was a curly handwritten style but Hangul on the right was different, right? Um, King Sejong intended to keep the simple shapes to show the basic structure of Hangul. As far as I can tell, the first shape of Hangul started from um, with geometric styles. 
After its invention, Hangul started to be used for daily life. For instance, this is the first Buddhist Bible in Hangul. The letter form was still geometric signs. This is a book for um, ethics named Orion Teng Do. Here you can see um, brush touches and uh, handwritten letters. You can see the letter forms were influenced by brush. And Hangul novels, to make such books in a short time, they were cut on the wooden plates directly by hand. Like this, in the following centuries, the letter form of Hangul was influenced by brush or cutting tools. Um, however, um, today's digital typefaces are quite different from these historical origins. Then, um, what do modern Hangul look like and who created it? Um, while studying the origin of Hangul digital typefaces, I reached a designer whose name is Choi Jung Ho. He was known as a craftsman who drew more than 40 beautiful Hangul letter forms for metal type and phototype setting. The reason why I started researching Choi was when I was thinking about the topic of my PhD dissertation. I remembered the survey from my bachelor years in 2005. Um, I asked Korean graphic designers, what is your favorite typeface? Most of them answered SM fonts. Then I asked why. They said, yeah, they have beautiful shapes and good balance, or they have the high level of completion or it has the consistent text colors. And also, yeah, SM fonts are trustworthy because they were based on Choi Jung Ho's original drawings. So I started to investigate fonts and its foundry, Shin Myung. The founder, uh, foundry had already disappeared, but I was able to meet its former president, Kim Min Su. I was told about an interesting story. He said SM fonts were based on letter forms from Japanese phototype setting machines offered by Shark Ken and Morisawa. And those typefaces were designed by Choi Jung Ho. Um, as a result of this, I thought Choi was a key person on the origin of the early Hangul digital typefaces. However, I was only able to find some vague stories about him and nobody studied deep into his work. Um, I was curious, what do his original drawings look like? Where can I see them? So I started researching his work. Here I want to show Choi's um, work, which I found. Um, his first work was a typeface for Dongha Press which was released in 1957. It was designed for the metal type using the Banton pantograph machine. Dongha Press published the collection of world literature and encyclopedia. And they became a major publisher with the reputation of high quality type and high legibility printing. Sadly, Dongha Press does not exist and at this time. I was not able to find his drawings. Instead, I found this, um, these several books using his types. And the typist has the balance aligned mid-right side for the vertical writing. In the 1970s, he also designed Hangul for the phototype setting machines from Shaken and Morisawa. Phototype setting was very useful for Hangul because it did not need to keep the heavy metal type and matrices in stock. However, um, using the machines, they needed Hangul. 
Accordingly, Morisawa and Shaken, each of them asked Choi to develop Hangul, harmonizing with their font collections. The point is two different type foundries chose Choi because he was the most outstanding designer in Hangul. Mm, but again, there is no one and no research to who introduced Choi's drawings. Um, but I visited Japan to find them, and my great teachers in Japan, they helped me a lot. Um, Helmut Schmidt, who was my great teacher, introduced me to Torinomi Osamu, who is also a great type designer in Japan. And he gave a call to Morisawa. And actually, it was a long story, but yeah, by all means, I found them. at Morisawa in Osaka. Yep. Like this. So again, I thank my teachers and Morisawa. Yep. The first impression I got from them was um, they were beautiful and familiar. Um, that's because they were very similar to today, digital typeface what we are using you know, in computers or books. Therefore, I compared his drawings to numerous early digital typefaces. And this is the original drawing named Morisawa Jungmyeongjo. I found um, SM Shinshinmyeongjo and SM Shinmyeongjo looked very similar to Chase's. Of course, there are some differences, such as small details on the strokes and contrast, but the structure of characters seemed very close. In case of Shaken, um, it was hard to find his, uh, his drawings. But again, my Japanese type design, um, designer friends helped me a lot, and I got this. It's the glass type plate from Shaken, which works as a font in phototype setting. So using the plate, I could blow up Shaken Hangul and print them to have a closer look. Then I compared these findings to the early digital type pieces, and I found they were similar to SM Jungmyeongjo. According to this research, I drew the Hangul type origin tree. You can find here Morisawa and Shaken Hangul gave a strong influence to SM fonts, which is the um, most popular early digital typefaces. Okay. Mm. Um, I'm gonna show more drawings of Che. This is Morisawa Segodik. You can see ink, ink traps. And Morisawa Tegodik. To get a better quality of printing, um, Che designed his sunshades with little bumps and concave stems. Hangul, um, and Hangul sunshade type A, I, I showed you before, um, that came from this. And this is Morisawa Hwalja Che. And this is Morisawa Junghan Godi. And Shaken Gongjak Che. And this is Chotuk Te Godi. When I saw this, um, I was surprised because I hadn't seen this strong, heavy sun serif before, not even in digital phones, but he already drew it in 1985. And um, so um, last year, Ann Graphics released the revival of this Chotuk Tegodik. And this is the last drawing for designer An Sang Su from Che. Uh, from Che, um, it did, didn't have any name, so unnamed it Che Jong Ho followed his name. 
Also, the revival font was released in this year. Um, in conclusion, um, Che designed Hangul typefaces for meta type and photo type setting, and they became the foundation for the early Hangul digital typefaces. And his typefaces are some of the most significant Hangul designs of the 20th century. However, the sto story was um, vague. And Che was known as a only craftsman. Um, we did not even call him type designer. Therefore, I wrote a book about him, um, introduced his drawings, and titled it Hangul Type Designer Che Chong Ho. I hope this research will be a meaningful step for Hangul design, which is really young and young script in the world. Yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs>